On this trip, my dad, Matt, Reese, and I are heading to colorful Colorado to chase after rutting elk with my muzzleloader. We run into brutal weather, call shy elk, and loads of hunting pressure. We are going to have to earn every opportunity we get this year. Come along for the ride. That's a good sign every single year first day that is absolutely insane we our truck is like it's not even 40 yards away and we already see a bull moose you, big bull moose that's incredible that is incredible what a good sign to start out all right that moose kind of threw a wrench in our plans we wanted to leave but didn't want to spook it so we gave him about 15 it's now it's getting real close to, uh, to uh, dark and we might not have a whole lot of time to class tonight but we'll be in a good spot for tomorrow morning. Before we crest over top of this hill I'm going to let out a couple cow calls and just see if there's something on the ridge that you know might be susceptible. We have, wait, wait, what are these things called? Don't, don't. <laughs> ready, ready wise, like ready wise MREs. Man, we had mac and cheese the one time and it was terrible. And like, we're like, how do you mess up mac and cheese? Like, well, maybe this one's a little bit better. This is hearty tortilla soup. And it's, it, it just tastes like cardboard. <laughs> Needless to say, I don't think we're gonna be using ready wise anymore this trip. All right, now instead of that that absolute crap before, now we, we opened up a mountain house and what is it? Uh, chicken Alfredo. Chicken Alfredo. Fettuccine. Fettuccine Alfredo, and this stuff is delicious. Yeah, mountain house for the rest of the time we're out here, or the homemade stuff. All right, we just got done eating, and we're gonna, because we're camping so close to the glassing knob that we're going to tomorrow, we're gonna go out there and rip a couple bugles and just see if there's any elk in the area. Um, you know, if we're going to be able to find some, if they're going to be a, be bugling right now. Uh, I definitely got a couple pretty decent whiffs of elk while we've been around here. Not saying that they're here right now, but they've definitely been here before, so that's a good sign. Here we have a, we have a rub from an elk. It's probably like a, I would say probably at least a year or two old, but that's still a good sign. I mean, they're in the area for sure. There's these old ass Budweiser cans. Some vintage hunters have been up on this spot before. All right, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but let out that bugle and just got the coyotes going crazy about probably three quarters of a mile straight ahead of us. We thought it was a bugle at first, but it turns out they're just a bunch of coyotes. So I might give out one more in like 10 minutes or so. See if we can get an answer here. We got nothing going on right there. We're gonna head back towards camp, but we're gonna trump, we're gonna jump over the ridge, over through the saddle and and try a couple bugles on the other side. See if we can get an answer there. All right, nothing for the first night, but man, it is absolutely gorgeous out here. Pretty much zero wind, dead quiet. If we 
have nights like this every night, we are bound to uh, at least run into something. So fingers crossed for good weather. And man, I'm just looking forward to, to just hunting hard this whole week. It's gonna be so much fun. Right now we're on the edge of our unit boundary and to the right here there's this like just massive cliff I'll, I'll show it to you a little bit later whenever it gets light but holy cow it's like a thousand feet just straight down man what an epic view right here we got a pretty commanding view of the whole valley and um the sun's coming up right now all right it looks like we got another moose out here i can't really tell if it's a bull or a cow it's kind of behind this tree but it's just been it's just been standing there so it's cold, cold to see i mean two moose that's not too bad that is actually a cow and not a cow moose it's a just a cow the most boring kind of cow for us to see right now it makes sense though because we haven't really heard anything we haven't really seen anything not even mule deer so like They've obviously been ranching this land, you know, grazing cattle and stuff. And um, elk and deer, they tend to not like that very much. So, so I think what we're going to do, now that we kind of have that information, I'm going to let out a few bugles, see what happens. But I, I think I'm kind of shifting my mind more towards our next spot, um, you know, when we ultimately go back down to the road and everything. As soon as I let that cow call out, we have a coyote just come pop his head up right here, like immediately, and he's just staring at us. Last night, whenever we were sleeping, there were just tons, tons of coyotes around us, like around our camp, and they were howling whenever I was bugling. They were howling, and they were, they're just, they're, they're around here, man. And and then, not to mention that there's those cows down there. It just doesn't seem like an area very conducive to good elk hunting. All right, well, that was fun. Saw a couple things, but um, yeah, we're, we're gonna start heading back now and go back to the truck, get our five five day pack set up and, and kind of hit the road and, and see if we can run into some elk in some different country. This is just such a beautiful area. And like, I was just telling Matt, you know, we have hundreds of thousands of acres to hunt. Might as well keep moving. Might as well see as much ground as possible. That's how, that's how you run into the elk, so. And that right there is probably a big reason why we're not seeing many elk. This is some thick, thick brush. Bunch of deadfall, but also a very good bedding area because it's a north facing slope. tips of these have been kind of browsed off so there's definitely something in the area I feel like a cow would just eat the, the whole thing those cows are also on the other side of the fence so there's a potential that there could be elk somewhere in this area bear poop that's a large that's a large piece of crap although they do say that you can't really tell the size of a bear based on the size of its crap so but I have a hard time picturing that that didn't come out of a very large bear. Matt had a good eye, he caught this wall right here, but like there's grass growing in it. I don't, I don't really think that there's elk using that right now just because it's not that beat down. That's a big bear print right there. So you can tell, you can kind of tell how big a bear is, that one back there. You, you can tell by the width of the paw. Typically, kind of the rule of thumb is inches across is the length and feet of the bear. So that one was a five and a half inch wide paw, probably a five and a half foot bear, which is a pretty decent sized bear, especially for the lower 48. We got a yard sale going on. So 
so we just relocated to a different spot um as you can see behind me there's a couple trucks at the trailhead so i'm a little hesitant but you know we're back here we're gonna bomb in for a day i think we're gonna pack probably two days worth of food just in case we run into something but um, probably go back about two miles or so and see if we can see if we can hear something calling i mean this spot <laughs> is looks a lot better there's grass it's not grazed so i think the biggest thing for us is to just keep on moving until we find elk and if we're not finding elk here then we're gonna we're gonna bomb over to a different a different area but um but yeah that's the plan for right now we're gonna eat some lunch real quick we had a little rain squall come in while we were cooking so we were able to set up the tarp and get all the stuff underneath there and now we're just kind of cooking eating food and chilling out until the rain passes by and then we're gonna we're gonna hit the trail all right so we just heard something break and brush up and we're walking up the trail we just heard something busting up here so we're kind of making our way up this way and seeing if we can run into it it's a really thick brush right here this altitude is no joke. You come up here, you think you're in good shape. You're probably not, not in as good a shape as you think you are. We're at 10,000, 10,400 right now. And yeah, it's like every single step you <laughs> come out and get out of breath. <laughs> I know for sure you can't tell how steep this stuff is, but take my word for it, it's steep. Just for scale. Matt's head is at my feet. We're like five feet apart. <laughs> it's, and I feel like it just gets steeper. I have an insane amount of admiration for these animals. Being able to chase them in terrain like this. It is insane. Like, and they just live up here. Not only live, but they thrive in this sort of environment. And after all that work, we finally found a flat camp spot. <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna drop all our stuff here and we're gonna grab our we're gonna lighten our packs tremendously and go glass, go call, go see what's going on out there. I'm not sure if you can tell but that cloud looks very intimidating. We just ran into a, just a huge mule deer buck right thing is massive it's just right out in the meadow it's like very windy too i'm like very surprised that he's out right now he might not feel that windy right next to the birch. that's a big deer yeah man what a nice deer it seems like that it happens like that every single time whenever you got an elk tag you see nice mule deer whenever you got a mule deer tag you see nice elk those are some big bones right there All right, after a lot of deliberation, we finally made our decision about what we want to do. We're assuming that these these elk aren't going to want to be hanging out in the in the wind. So, instead of going on that side, we're going to we're going to jump over to the north slope because then the wind will kind of be coming over the mountain instead of blasting the face of it. And you know, we might be able to run into an elk or two back here because you know they're just going to be bedded down probably what our strategy will be while we're back here is letting out bugles and just kind of still hunting our way back um you know back on the other side of this mountain here all the way back to camp not ideal circumstances for sure but you know you can't really give up or just sit around and do nothing because that's not going to help you either all right, we're coming up this ridge right now. I don't know, we thought we heard a bugle. It's like a potential bugle. But we not 100% sure it was very distant. It might just be our minds playing tricks on us. <laughs> we're gonna head after it. Let out a few more cow calls. See if we can get close. Right there. Um, 
she just kind of sat there, so we walked in the opposite direction. I don't think she really knew where we were. But she was kind of right where we were trying to go, so we we're going to make a big loop around her and, and make our way back to where we were going. We tried cow calling, we tried bugling, we tried raking, we threw the kitchen sink at these elk, and it's not working. Our idea is that they're not running just quite yet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sit this open field right here. We've got a breeze coming from left to right, hoping that whenever these elk are coming out of their beds, they're walking downhill to the field two feet. Well, that was a bust. <laughs> Nothing, we didn't even see a single animal come through here. So we're gonna start walking back now. You can see behind me though, almost a full moon. So for those of you that like talking about the moon phase and how it affects the rut and all that stuff, there might be some validity to arguments there. Now we have a long, long walk back to camp. I only brought one pair of socks, so check out my, uh, my camp shoes. <laughs> Boom. Awesome. It's my inflatable mattress package <laughs> and my tarp. They're pretty comfortable. <laughs> they actually call us um, up there. I just want to thank Matt, Matt's buddy, for <laughs> making these amazing looking little dehydrated meals. He didn't make them, he just got them. Oh, he just got them for you. They cannot be any worse than Ready Wise. Wants lasagna with meat sauce. That's our food. It's not too shabby. That should work. Should at least deter a bear. Whew. We had quite the little rainstorm last night that came through. Um, right now it is 6.07. We're gonna start getting ready. It's rain kind of passed. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on my inReach, see if I can get a little bit of a more updated weather report. What a beautiful Colorado September day. We got about 15 to 16 mile an hour wind, gusting probably about 20, 25, and just a persistent rain. So this is um <laughs> this is gonna be fun. This will be interesting. We're um, we're on our way to get water right now, and then we're gonna go ahead to the back side of this mountain and try and get out of the weather just a little bit. See if we can just get out of the wind. Alright, now we got water filtered. We're just kind of still heading our way through through the timber. And every once in a while let out a couple cow calls, bugle. See if we can locate something. See if we can run into something, find some fresh sign.
just picked up a pretty far off bugle. It's the best, the best, the best thing we've heard so far. So we're gonna we're gonna have to drop down off this uh, off this cliff right here and make our way down this drainage and then up the other side. So hopefully we can get pretty close to them. just bugled on his own again. So what we're gonna do right now is we can be just have we have a general idea where he's at. But just to make sure we're certain we're gonna go up to this little area with this little clearing, this meadow up top, uh, and try and do some glassing. deliberation we decide it's probably best because we're as close as we're gonna get to camp so we should probably head back to camp pack everything up take it out and kind of chase the elk chase the bugles All packed up, time to head back down. Look how loaded down we are. That's a lot of gear. There's so much foot traffic back here. We're walking down this trail and you just, there's boot prints everywhere, everywhere. So I feel good about the decision to pick up and move again. We're gonna try and get a little bit closer to that elk. See if we can see if we can find a trail. It's a little bit less less traveled. You know what it was. We're socked in the car right now. It's raining and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. 
but we're in a beautiful spot and almost gave my dad a heart attack driving in because it was tight. <laughs> but we're in a good spot now, I think. I don't know, it just looks like elk habitat. And there's no one back here, which is nice, especially for an over-the-counter unit in the middle of September. That out right there. I This, this spot is just oozing a, a certain type of swagger that I have yet to feel on this trip. I am very, very, very excited for this spot. It just is so gorgeous. Like, oh my gosh. Right now I'm uh, just glassing this valley out, seeing if I can uh, turn anything up. It just stopped raining. It's drizzling still a little bit, but the sun's coming out. And it's uh, right now 623. Sun goes down in a little bit over, or a little bit under an hour. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm stoked, man. This is going to be awesome. Look how bright that is. Oh, my goodness. Just blue skies. All right, we just picked up. We just picked up. I, I think it was a bull. I'm not 100% sure, though. The only reason I think it was is because it was by itself, but way up there in the alpine. Kind of crested over top of the ridge before I we got um, a little bit higher powered glass on it, but very good sign. Just kind of feeding, moving along the ridge line. See if we can pick up another one here before dark. I think tonight's glassing session is going to be over. We've lost sight because it's gotten dark, but we got a full moon and it is pretty incredible. I'm trying to get it through the binoculars to show you guys, but it, it doesn't do it justice. It is a spectacular sight whenever you're out here. Absolutely zero light pollution, and there's a full moon. It's it's incredible, and it's even more incredible whenever you get to see the stars whenever the moon sets. It's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. I'm really feeling good about tomorrow. I'm so happy we saw that bull. Hopefully we get to hear a couple bugles tonight. Uh, because it was raining the majority of today so you know hopefully they're a little bit more active tonight especially with the full moon there's going to be a lot more light but um but yeah i think right now we're going to head back to head back to the truck we're going to sleep at the truck tonight cook up some dinner relax and uh, get ready for tomorrow Good morning. It's right now Tuesday. We've been here for three days now. And um, got a little bit of a late start this morning. We were uh, just kind of packing things up. It was raining all last night. Um, and kind of raining into this morning. So took a light um, kind of early morning to eat some breakfast. And then sat around camp and did some glassing. Plan on spending a few days out here. Seeing what we can turn up. It's supposed to rain today around noon and that's supposed to get pretty windy so I think our best bet is going to be to hunker down somewhere, wait for the rain to pass. found a nice little campsite here all set up ready to go right at the top of this pass right now I'm just gonna look for some firewood and try and get a fire going here real quick before the rain comes in this is going to test all of my fire build fire building capabilities because everything is soaking wet now, now this stuff right here is pretty good because it's it's dead and it's also like in the sun, you know, it's not in the shade. So that sun's gonna dry it out a lot quicker than something that would be in the shade. It's getting dark and that storm's coming closer. So we're just kind of buttoning things down and getting a shelter set up before it really starts downpouring. 
Oh, we could run this. Well, I came fast, but just like that, it's gone. Um, I think it might rain again, so I'm a little hesitant to say that it's over. I'm gonna check my end reach here real quick, see what the weather's like, get an updated weather check, and um, yeah. It's always interesting up here. It changes in the blink of an eye, the weather does. We had a code red. <laughs> it was really windy up on the top of that cliff. All right, we had a little bit of a mad dash to get set up down here. Uh, we got we got Matt's tent set up, we got this tarp set up. But um, yeah, this storm is rolling in and it is does not sound kind. There's some thunder, some lightning. It's probably, it's probably gonna go straight over top of us, but yeah, we're gonna just hunker down here for a few, probably an hour or two and just wait it out. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too bad and the shelter holds and we don't get too wet here. At least it's not rain on, it's just hailing on. It's just hail. <laughs> get in here. Socked in. It's supposed to rain like this until 8 p.m. And you want to know what time it is right now? <laughs> quarter after one. <laughs> quarter, quarter after one. All right, now, now, while we're here in the tent, we got some chili, homemade chili, freeze dried. Oh, that is good. If you serve that to someone at a restaurant, see like the they would to like this it. stuff is like it actually has flavor to it. Yeah. The sun finally came back and is saying hello. It's still windy, but we're packing up camp right now. Or well, our in our makeshift camp, and we're gonna load up. We're gonna hike to our glassing spot. It's still very windy right now, and. You know, kind of con the consensus is that we're probably going to do more harm than good if we were to be calling and stuff right now. So we're going to try and get to a good vantage point for tonight. Um, be able to overlook some south face or er, uh, north facing slopes because the wind's coming from the southwest. So anywhere that's kind of sheltered by the wind is where we're going to want to be looking. I'm gonna try and head back up to the top of the mountain and, and get a little bit of a weather update, see if anything's changed in the forecast. It looks like it's pretty sunny and it kind of blew over, but just wanna make sure before we pack everything up and, and head to our next spot so we're not stranded in the rain again. That looks like a very well-traveled game trail right there. This is our last creek crossing before we get to where we're gonna camp so we gotta fill up all the water and just in time for us to do like a 400 foot straight up elevation climb you think it's more Might be. maybe 600 all right now that we're all filled up we're heading uphill some thick stuff right here but absolutely gorgeous you can see just how steep it is all right, we just found this wall right back behind me. It's just absolutely torn up with tracks, so we're gonna work our way slow through here. This is a nice aspen thicket. It's kind of wind blown, but not too bad. So we're just gonna just gonna walk through here slow, do a lot of looking, and see if we can find anything. We might sit that tonight, though. That ain't be a good idea. All right, we got our camp spot. Just trying to find some nice flat ground. We can set up our tents and stay out of the wind as much as possible. All right, time to glass. The coolest spot I've ever glassed. That had the genius idea. Something that I'm too stupid to think of. We got behind this tree and it's a little bit better, but <laughs> you can see how, how fast this wind is blowing. I think it said it's gusting. It's gotta be gusting 35. Gusting 35. Yeah, it's um it's windy for sure. 
That concludes today's little glassing session. The nightcap. All we turned up was a little mule deer doe, but that is an awesome spot. And I think we're gonna have some good luck. Good luck tomorrow. So knob and right before we you could really really see I saw this white or um, kind of yellow speck on the hillside and once you have it we got an elk interesting little development Matt joined us <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we, we, we got one we got one cow that I saw earlier now we got two cows I think one of them's cow for sure the other one still kind of hidden I can't really tell I'm gonna keep two eyes on her Matt's gonna pan around see if you can spot anything else but very good sign right now we saw four Matt had a good spot on four muley bucks one's a decent four point the other were forkies but um, yeah it seems like there's a lot of stuff up on their feet right now trying to make up for past few days of rain and wind they just keep coming out by the droves we got a bear now a little bit higher all right that was a pretty productive glassing session we saw a bunch of game a um, bunch of different species too so but kind of started to get a little bit um, a little bit slow not as many um, animals moving around it got a little bit windy so we're heading back to camp right now and we are going to get some stuff ready and uh, go on a little bit of a loop, a little trip around the mountain and see if we can find anything that way. All right, we're loaded up for a little day hike. Just got the guns. It's supposed to be real nice today, real sunny. A little chilly, but not too bad, so we're not loaded down with clothes or anything like that. Biggest thing is we're just gonna go get some water here, work our way up this ridge, do some calling, see if we can turn up a bull here and, and make a play on it today. As we were walking, we spotted those elk again, you know, kind of where they were just at, and they, they went down in this little fold in the terrain. So we moved about probably like 300, 400 yards this way. We're gonna try and glass them up again and see if we can see if we can figure out if there's a bull with them or not. Right behind me is, uh, I believe, 13,900 feet. Well, since the elk action has been slow and we're up on top of this mountain and can see literally 50 miles in all directions, basically, we're gonna see if we can glass up some mountain goats. There's a pretty tall mountain right over here and prime mountain goat country, so let's see if we can uh, spot some up. No mountain goats, but we're back on our our face, our mountain, and uh, just doing a little bit more searching, seeing if anything stood up. All right, after a scenic lunch, we're heading back down. We're gonna do some calling, do a nice big loop, see if we can turn up an elk. But if not, we'll be back at camp soon. I just kicked up one of the biggest grouses I've ever seen in my entire life. The thing was so big. It literally looked like like a like a turkey. It was that it was that large. It's like, trying to get water we passed through one drainage and did not have water and it was super steep so now we're heading to the next one just absolutely devastating news that creek
That creek looks awfully dry to me. There's gonna be a lot of rests on this hike. You can see right here, this branch is absolutely tore up from a bull. That's definitely an oak. Praise the Lord, we found water. That was a long hike without water. I swear, I think I just filled this bottle up with this spring water at least 10 times. Maybe 12, maybe 15, I don't even know. I feel like I've been sitting overneath this, over top of this water hole for like 30 minutes. <laughs> All right, so we just we just ran into another hunter. He was bow hunting elk and mule deer. And he, we, um, we also ran into a bunch of these wallows down here at the bottom and you know, he was coming to check things out and kind of point us in the direction of right here where the wind is a little bit more consistent, but I think we're gonna sit this wallow for tonight. Head back to camp tonight after after we're done here. But yeah, he said he said he uh, saw a cow I think a couple nights back um, come into these wallows. So it's definitely a hot spot, and there's a, there's a spring back here. It seems like the only source of water on you know at this elevation specifically. So I think it should be good. And these these walls are really torn up, which will be which will be good. So we're gonna get set up. And, See what happens. We're already talking about food that we're gonna eat whenever we get out of here. No luck, didn't see anything there, so and it's getting pretty dark. Can't really see my sight too much, so we're gonna back out of here. I think we got a good game planned for tomorrow. Make the uh, short hike back to camp and then eat some dinner and relax.
turn back around. It got really thick up there and I wasn't hearing anything, not even any foot, like any footsteps or anything like that, not bugling anymore. So, and my, my phone and my inReach are about to run out of battery, so I should probably get back to camp before that happens. What a bummer, man, what a bummer. You, know, you work so hard to get like opportunities like that and you kind of just little things and you beat yourself up over them. I'm glad that we got the opportunity, but just um, I wish I would have set up a little, a little in a little bit more of an open spot so that I could have, so I would have been able to, you know, get a shot on that thing. But I, you know, I had no idea that it was going to go that direction, so I can't beat myself up too much over it. But it still stings. It still sucks. And especially with time running out and our, be, this being our last full day here. disappointing. I just bumped a huge muley buck. Bigger than the one we saw earlier. That thing was massive. We're back on the wall right down here. That mule deer was sitting right here. Right where I was sitting earlier today. He went that way. Man. Like kind of turned on a little bit here. It's only 7.50 right now and I've already seen the elk. told myself I'd stay there a couple hours and I did didn't see anything else after that after I jumped that mule deer so now I'm gonna head back to camp and I'm just I'm seeing sign everywhere on these in these aspen meadows that was this morning yeah that was this morning again just littered with sign man just absolutely littered with it like right now I'm on this trail with fresh poop like I'm talking like this morning and there's just trails just all through this stuff like we're in elk they're just not making any noise it's because they're probably just so pressured all right so Matt spotted a bull as I hoped and we're, we're kind of scrambling to get pan, camp packed up and, and try to chase after it was going down valley not sure if it was the same one but Said he was chasing cows, so you know we might be able to make a play on him and uh, get close. Seems like I came back at the exact right time because we got everything packed up and about to head off after this thing. Hopefully we can make a play. It seems like he's rotting pretty hard, uh, based on what Matt said. So maybe we'll be able to call him in. That that would be awesome. So Matt's Matt's saying that there's there's bulls right over here on the other side of this drainage. We're gonna drop down in. We're gonna kind of skirt our way down because the wind's blowing this way. We're gonna try and get behind them, maybe make a couple calls, see if we can see if we can beat them down there. Cause I guarantee you they're gonna be bedded by the time we get there. Oh, we finally made it onto the trail. Now we can actually cover some cover some country quickly. We're hoping to get by that bull hopefully by noon. I think we're making pretty decent time. It's 1024 right now. We just dropped. We just dropped from all the way up there. Basically at the top. The whole way down to the bottom of this drainage and then came back up to hit this trail. Because this kind of leads towards where that bull's at. At least it leads to the drainage that we can access the bull from. The stream. We're going to fill up our waters, probably drop um, camp and any extra weight that we have because we got to go up. And it looks very steep. All right, well, we left my dad behind because we were going to chase up after after that elk, but look who made it. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> we took so long to filter that he, you know, yeah. These guys are slow. Yeah, we're slow. <laughs> but we're we're about to we're about to make a play now. Like I said, drop some stuff off up here. 
skirt up there and then wait them out and see if they'll come out by the night. <laughs> We're in a great spot right now. Setup is really good. The wind is coming from the southwest direction, blowing this way. Those elk are right up behind me, so the wind's gonna be blowing towards us. We kind of swooped around them, and now we're heading up this draw, or well, I guess this ridge line, and then we're about a drainage over from them, from where Matt saw them last. So we're hoping that we can kind of hunker down for a little bit, find a good vantage point, and just wait them out. It seems like the rut has like kicked on today. You know, we, we heard a bull we, I, I saw those bulls this morning by that wallow. That bull was just chasing the crap out of those cows. I heard a bugle while I was sitting at that wallow. Then I heard another one, which we think was this bull. So from, from not hearing anything for like four days to now hearing like three or four bugles in one day, it's a really good sign that they're gonna be getting up and getting after it later tonight whenever the sun kind of starts setting. Um, but we might even be able to hear some like midday type bugling at, at like noon depending on um, depending on how, how feisty they are. Off we go. It's honestly not as bad as I was expecting. Or we just ran right into a little grove of aspen trees and kind of opens up a little bit more. It's not too too steep but I'm sure it'll get steeper. But right now this is what we're looking at. left are these unflavored tuna packets and I'm about to house three of them because I'm so damn hungry <laughs> they taste like garbage but it's got protein it tastes like dog food this one's salmon might be kind of <laughs> yeah but it's not flavored <laughs> right now as we're sitting here we're just fantasizing about the food we're gonna eat on the way home Chipotle's first, and then Five Guys, and then maybe like some barbecue, because we're going through Kansas City. I don't know. Whatever we're getting, it's going to be good. It could be crap, and it could still be good. It will still be good. No gas station food. No gas station food. <laughs> no gas station food. Quote from Mark. Yeah. But it's in the book of Matthew. 442 right now we started this hike at 1215 so it probably took us like 30 minutes to get here like get to this this knob right here so we've probably been sitting here for like four hours it's, I can't say it's all been fun but it hasn't been that bad when you keep good company it's not that bad you know we're both <laughs> We're both talking about, just talking about the food that we're going to eat. How nice it's going to be to get a shower. Neither one of us has changed basically anything since we got here. <laughs> got to play the wind right. Yeah, I really, really got to worry about the wind here. <laughs> All right, right now I'm just doing some glassing of these hillsides. Not seeing anything, but that sun's about to go down below that mountain, and that's usually around the time when these elk start getting up and moving around, um, based on what we've seen through the glass on that other ridge. All right, and we're off. It's our last opportunity to bull this year. Well, this hunt. We're going off best knowledge we have. And that was this morning whenever Matt glassed him up. I also want to put a reminder out there that Sammy did predict that we were going to kill one today. We had that really good opportunity this morning. And now we have another pretty good opportunity. No wonder these elk love it back here so much. It is so thick. It's an hard to even move. 
We just covered like probably like 200 yards just by walking on those logs. It's actually a great way to travel because it's very quiet. God's gifted us with a nice easy trail down. I like, I would, I'm kind of imagining it something like a casino whenever you lose money, but they always say, thanks for trying. Well, this was the elk God's way of saying, you gave it your best. Thanks for trying. Come back again soon. And, you know, I think that's pretty cool. For dinner, I'm thinking ramen, and I'm thinking MREs thinking whatever the heck else we got in that tub of food. Feels great to finally come back out and back to the truck, man. It has been an epic hunt. Um, if I had to go back and do it all over again, I would do the exact same thing, except maybe set up a little bit better off that wallow this morning. <laughs> but you know, can't live in the past. Um, I definitely think that this was one for the ages. This has been pretty awesome. Looking forward to coming back again in October. It's not done. This is to be continued. We have not had enough of Colorado this year. We're coming back again in October. So be ready for that. If you watched this far, I really appreciate it. Wish we had more elk action, but I think the mix of hunting pressure, warm weather mixed with rain and wind and all that, all that crap kind of delayed the rut just a little bit. But I think that... I still think that it was awesome. I think that we had a good time. And Matt, appreciate you coming along, buddy. It's been it's been fun. Wouldn't want to do it with anybody else, buddy. <laughs>